thank you for showing up. Uh, today we have a special guest, BJ Flores, <laughs> who's a boxer, a commentator, a trainer, and a nice guy. <laughs> Wear a lot of hats these days, huh, Phil? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, and uh, so BJ, man, you had some incredible career, boxing career. You've seen it all, you as an amateur, as a pro. Um, you've done so much, man. And you went to a boxing gym the first time you ever walked in a boxing gym, you were four years old. Your dad took you, huh? Yeah. T tell me a little bit about that. <clears throat> my dad was uh, an army guy stationed in Fort Hood, Texas, and he, my grandfather was a, was a boxer as well. So my dad was going to helicopter training school at the army and uh, in Fort Hood, Texas, and he loved boxing. So he would always go up to the boxing gym where Kenny Adams, who was later on that 1988 Olympic head coach, he was the trainer for the Army team at the time, and he would allow my dad to come into the gym and kind of train with some of the guys. He got along with my dad really well. So um, my dad wasn't on the Army boxing team. He wasn't that good, but he, he liked to be inv involved, and uh, he, he had a good friendship with a lot of the guys. So he would bring me and my older brother into the gym at a very young age, and we'd watch and uh, kind of watch all those you know future world champions uh, at the start of their career. You remember four years old. I'm, I, have, I have children. <laughs> I'm trying to think when they're four years old. <laughs> That's a lot to take in, walking in a boxing gym, especially a gym where there was like world-class yeah, fighters. Right. And to, so you walked in the gym at four years old. When did you put a pair of gloves on? I think the first time I put a pair of gloves on, I was six. And at I was six. in my garage, yeah. My father would, would work with my brother Jeremy first, and then he'd work with me next. And uh, very, very strict, very hard, um, very strict on the fundamentals. And uh, I remember it wasn't fun. I did not like it. But I would keep going back because I just I, I wanted to get it. But he was so strict on me with my punches. Like I'd bring I'd drop my hands. He would, you know, he wouldn't let me go into anything. So um, my dad kind of you know prides himself on being like a technician, very technical with how he does things. And I think it's it's carried over to me as an adult now. So um, I, I I'm very technical with all my stuff now too. And it's because how I was taught. No, that's great you say that because I I have two um, young boys, and uh, I actually trained them last last week. Okay. And it was rough because, you know, I want so much for them to do it right. And their heads are not always focused. Right. And like you said, your dad was really tough on you. Yeah, he was. And um, you hung in there. We, obviously, that was great. Did your mom uh, say anything about your dad being so tough on you? Oh, man, she didn't, she didn't like me boxing at all. And, uh, you know, his older brother did it. I was doing it, too. There was no discussion about how old, it. So. How old was your brother? He was three years older than me. So when I was six, he was nine. Um, he was already, uh, you know, pretty good. We'd bring neighborhood kids over to the house, supervised by my dad, of course, and he would, you know, spar guys that, when he was nine. Where in the in the garage? In the garage, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We had a lot of good, good, good video footage of that garage. Kids that were 13, 14 would come over. My brother would spar when he was nine, and you oh, know, I love to see that video. Knock them all out. Wow. And me sparring kids when I was, you know, six, seven. Kids that were 11, 12 years old. So you know, word got out pretty quick, and uh, you know, had a good reputation going to school, I guess. So did <laughs> no you boys. Like, Did you knock anybody out? Mm. I mean, when your kid's that age, it's kind of hard to, not, like, knock them unconscious, but um, pretty much everybody I sparred stopped or quit, yeah, within, uh, you know, 30 and, seconds and or no, no lawsuits? No, no, no lawsuits. <laughs> We're just, you know, back then, you know, people didn't, didn't uh, you know, post things on social media. People didn't run home. You know, if they're, if you got beat up at, the, at a boxing gym with boxing gloves on, the parents were like, okay, well, you'll live. You'll be fine. Yeah. And uh, there was no, none of the stuff like how it is today, so. No, it would be crazy. It would be a little strange if my son, I guess, and I didn't know about it. Yeah. He was in your garage with, yeah. your, with you, your dad, and all your... Yeah. And he comes home with yeah. a busted lip or a yeah. black eye. Well, my, my dad didn't let anybody get hurt at all. Like, if it was bad, yeah. he would stop it immediately. So I didn't really realize at the time, but he was kind of acting like a referee. He didn't, he didn't let anybody really get hurt. How so. old was your dad when he was uh, um, he training had, you? He had me when I was... Uh, he was 19. Oh, wow. And he That's had my older young. brother when he was 16. So, yeah. So he was still in his 20s. He right? was young. Yeah, yeah, he was in his 20s. He's 25. When he was training, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Wow. So, got an early start. <laughs> How did he take his uh, training serious, like with the fighters and stuff? Oh, yeah. So, he, he trained me all the way till I turned pro when I was 23. So, he was your main trainer? Yeah, he was my main trainer. So, when I fought for, uh, I won the U.S. championships. I won the National Golden Gloves at 18 um, in 1997 in Denver, Colorado. I was 18, and I beat a guy. Um, I beat five guys five nights in a row. But in the finals, the guy I beat was uh, 25. His name was uh, Donnell Holmes. He was a uh, you know, big guy, big puncher, and a uh, fight I wasn't supposed to win. 
outpointed him. Very close fight. Could have went either way. Very close fight. Well, they they do yeah. the point system over yeah. there. No, it was uh, it was judges scoring, but I beat him on a uh, I beat him on a three they two. Judges scoring. Judges really? scoring. Yep. Nineteen ninety seven. We we went to the computer well, electric scoring like in two thousand, oh. I believe. Yeah. How many judges did they have? Five. Yeah. So it was a three two. Three thought I won, and two thought he won. Wow. It's very very close. So I was lucky to win with that. Yeah, I have a lot of experience at those that whole uh, national, you know, international competition and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you never, you know, those computer judges. One time I seen a fight. It was even. Mm-hmm. Last round, a guy hit a guy with a right hand. One of the fighters hit the guy with the right hand. Beautiful right hand. Knocked him down. He gets right up. The scores didn't change. No point. No point. The next guy, <laughs> so the guy that got knocked down comes up, pops a jab out, and the bell rings. He wins. Wins the fight. That was like, when I, I saw that and I said, man, this got to change, man. <laughs> Not all is fair in love and war. So I you think, go. you know, when he knocked him down, the judges were shocked. Yeah. They, they said, oh, wow. And, and they forgot to press the button. When amateur boxing, you don't get any extra points for a knockdown. You only get a point for get a point. landing yeah, a clean yeah. blow. Yeah. So you knock him down. It's not like the pros where you get a 10 8 round. It doesn't count for anything in the amateurs. Just, just you get the point for the, the punch landed. So you also played football, yep. huh? Mm-hmm. How old were you when you first started playing football? Same age, seven. Yeah, I was in first grade when I had my first football game. What, what, what like flag or something? Or? No, we had tackle football. How old were you? For, I was seven. We had first and second grade, we had tackle football. So you were boxing also? Yeah, so I'd box during the fall, or I'd play football during the fall, and then box from um, you know October all the way through the rest of the year. And then August again, I would stop, and I'd play football for three months, four months. How old were you when you had your first fight? Um, nine. Mm-hmm. Did you uh, and your brother... Yeah, what he was, weights were you? I was uh, I was nine years old and I was eighty pounds. How about your brother? He was uh, I don't know what he was. I don't know what his weight Did was. Did you guys ever box each other? I mean, yeah, all the time, but I mean, not in a competition. Mm. He always beat me. How far did he go in boxing? He had sixty amateur fights. He went to the National Golden Gloves. He won the his region quite a few times. He he was pretty good locally. Uh, pretty good within a three-state area, but he never really took it serious enough because he did play football competitive. He, he played at University of Colorado. He was a second-team All-American kicker for the University of Colorado in 2001. Oh. So he made uh, 19 of 25 field goals his senior year at Colorado, and he was he was really good. So he kind of juggled those two back and forth more, and I was more serious on the boxing. Did he uh, work your corner and stuff, your fights at all? My dad it? did. My brother didn't know. My dad did. But you could always hear my brother right outside the ring yelling and screaming. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so he supported you. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah, 100%. Wow. Mm-hmm. You have no children? No, not that I know of. <laughs> I'm scared. No, I'm scared. if I had some, I'd know, trust me. Yeah. But no, I don't have any kids, no. You want to have kids? Of course, yeah. Yep. Sure do. Just got to lock, uh, lock that one down, Phil. The magic yeah. question. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, when are you gonna have kids? I don't know when I when I meet the girl that says okay. You haven't met her yet. This is why I'm not saying that. I've, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> we gotta keep this, keep the personal stuff personal. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just uh, I'm not sure when I'll have kids. I'm not sure, but I yeah. do want to have them. Yeah. And a lot of times it's like a surprise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like a surprise visit. Hopefully not. But <laughs> it's like a knock on the door. Man, daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, I'll, hopefully I won't have any of those. So. You played football. You stopped boxing, right? Then you go, you play football? Yeah. And uh, you, you got a scholarship at Brigham Young, yep. right? Yeah, I got a scholarship to University of Missouri, Purdue, um, Colorado, and uh, Brigham Young. What position did you Wide play? receiver. Mm-hmm. Wide receiver, mm-hmm. wow. Yep. And you, you gave that up for boxing? I didn't give it up. I just, I made a decision that I wanted to box instead. So I did yeah. them both as long as I could, and then just the time came where boxing made more sense. So... Instead of going to college and being a you know pretty good college wide receiver and probably not making the NFL, like most of my friends I played in college with didn't make the NFL. You know, the NFL stands for not for long. I mean, even if you make yeah. it, you're not staying long. It's tough. I mean, people don't realize the, the elite level of talent in the NFL. And uh, in boxing, I just uh, I was one of the top guys in the country and uh, spoke Spanish, heavyweight. You know, it, was good. it just made more sense to go in boxing. Wow. Yeah, kind of gave me a little more control of my own life instead of, you know, having a team. And it, I just like you know, being in control of, like, what was happening in my own life. Have you ever had any serious injuries in no, boxing? No, Hand injuries, uh, broke my nose twice, and that's it. And that's it. Yeah. No head injuries, nothing. People have such a misconception. Yeah. You know, I, I remember once um, I was in Colorado at um, the USA tournament there, and um, I never took a – and I've been working a corner for so many years, but I never I never took the class. Yeah. You know, like, and they forced me to take a class. Yeah, you have to, yep. 
And um, they had the f- top 10 sports, physical sports, yeah. injuries, and boxing was number 10, getting hurt. Sounds about right. Right? And yeah. people think that boxing, what are you, crazy? You're going to yeah. get all messed up and all yeah. that stuff. More injuries in football. Now, as far as, like, if you concentrate what the injuries are, there's more head injuries in professional boxing, I would say, than than other sports but well, especially like f- longevity football yeah. might be just as bad yeah football could football is probably worse yeah yeah but uh you know you get those guys and you get them making weight and you get them dehydrated and then the fluids come the fluid comes out of the brain first whenever you whenever you're yeah. making weight and then you got these guys who are going in the ring dry and they're dehydrated from making weight the next day and they get in there and they get hit and then it's it, it yeah, affects they, the brain, they change yeah. the weight now uh the weigh-in the day before. Yeah, that's great i, I think love a it. lot yeah because of that yep instead it used to be the morning before it's a big difference yeah the only Downside to that is uh, the middleweight to walk in though, like a cruiserweight, the day of the fight. I think it makes for a good fight. <laughs> and well, if, if both fighters gain the weight, yeah, yeah. sometimes one does because he has a problem. Yeah, but it's strategy now. You know, you weigh in the day before, so you got to strategize the fight at the weight that you could be most effective. I heard you took two years off, hmm? <laughs> and you went to Mexico. Yeah. I lived in Culiacan, Mexico. I was a missionary. I did a lot of service. I, uh, we built houses. We uh, helped uh, do activities in neighborhoods. We did all kinds of stuff uh, to help communities and help help the areas. And it was it was a great experience in Culiacan, which is where uh, Julio Cesar Chavez is mm-hmm. from, and uh, became good friends with uh, Ramon Felix, who uh, started Chavez, and that was the gym where Chavez cha- uh, trained. How at. old were you when you went down there? I was 19. Mm-hmm. So you you were very you were serious about your boxing. Oh yeah. Were you, were you still playing football? But well, that's when you left. Yeah, I left. Yeah, I left. I couldn't do either one. Did you I ever couldn't. go back to football? Yeah. Mm-hmm. After you came back from Mexico. Yep. yep, I did. I played two years at a junior college in Southern Utah called Snow, <clears throat> number one passing school in the country. So as a receiver, obviously it was like music to my ears. So I went down there for two years, had a pretty good freshman season. You know, there. But you were still boxing. I was still boxing in the fall. Yeah, or I was still boxing in the springtime. Yeah. So I'd box all from November all the way until July, and then I'd play football July till uh, October. Well, that was 19. When did you turn pro? How old were you when you turned pro? I was 23. Pro? I turned pro in 2003. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 23. They used to say in the old days, that's too old. So mm-hmm. stupid. But people retired when they were 29, 30 in the old days, too. Yeah. So it's a different different time. What made you go to Mexico? Did you have a call in? Yeah, they called you? me, yeah. I said, I said, look, I want to go on a mission, and then they said, uh, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna take all your information. And we're gonna we're gonna send you somewhere. And with my last name Flores, they decided to send me to Mexico, and it was great. My Spanish is muy 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 bien. <laughs> <laughs> Hablo muy bien. <laughs> so yeah, it was good. It was a great call. So you went. You were still training, like on a regular basis while no. you were done in boxing. Or no. no, it was all about the missionary work and the service. <clears throat> but we had a one day a week called a preparation day, where we could uh, you know do kind of whatever we wanted within reason within the rules. So. I would uh, our, our time we had to be up in the morning was 6:30, but I would get up at 5:30 so I could run before, you know, and, and and not infringe on my time where I was supposed to be up. So my alarm was set every day for 5:30. For two years, I got up every day at 5:30 and I ran before um, I was supposed to be up to make sure that I got my work in before. And then at night when I would come home, we didn't get home till 9:30. <clears throat> so from like 9:45 to like 10:15, I would shadow box, do push-ups, do everything in my living room, and just make sure I stayed sharp. And then on Mondays, I would go to the local gym and spar all the local pros. Wow. Yeah. And that's how I got my nickname, El Peligroso, which means dangerous, because I would spar with the local pros in Culiacan, and that's that's the nickname that... Uh, and that was the gym that Chavez yeah. trained at? That's a gym he trained at when he was a kid, not as an adult. So you, uh, you were a top amateur fighter, mm-hmm. and most top amateur fighters are definitely shooting for the Olympics. Yep. That's, that's usually the, like winning a title as a pro. Yep. Now, for some reason... You being a top amateur heavyweight, you decided to give up the amateur route. Right. That's a big. That's a big thing. Did your parents? What your parents think about that? Um, how they, far? How close were you to the Olympic trials? I was close. Yeah, I was really close. Um, I mean, why I, wouldn't? Why would? Why would you like not? I did. Give I, it a shot. I didn't want to wait another twenty four months before going pro. I was ready to go pro. I was already twenty three and I wanted to go. So. So it was twenty four months, huh? Yeah. Two years. No, but I mean, I didn't want to wait. I went pro in May of two thousand three. The Olympics weren't until August of two thousand four. So, what your parents think? What made you like? Yeah, I'm sure you had to do a lot of soul searching and my thinking parents, about I, it. My parents, I didn't. I didn't really ask my parents. Like, I was twenty three. I lived on my own for six years. Like, I wasn't like. 
you know, I live by myself. I made my own decisions. So yeah. that's that's how it went. So. So who'd you? Uh, what made you sign with a professional? With main events. Main I signed events? with main events because I, I I was promoted by. Uh, I was I was scouted by a lot of different you know promoters when I was when I was winning all these national tournaments and winning these international tournaments, and uh, main events. Kathy Duva. Kathy Duva. Carl was, Moretti. Was, yeah, was Lou Duva around then? No, he was already doing his own thing. Because I know it was main events, and then there was um, they split up with the brother Dan, Dan Duva. Yeah. Lou Duva. So it was just main events, and then Duva boxing. Right? Dan Dan actually died. Dan was Kathy's yeah. husband. Yeah. Dino that, Duva was the brother who they split with. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember uh yeah, I remember that. So Dan was main events with Dino whenever uh Dino passed away a little before that um or whenever Dan passed away, they split up and then Kathy Duva took over main events whenever Dan died. She's still promoting. Yeah, she's great. Now, yeah. She's right? amazing. A, a, who who she got? Who's the number one fighter? I mean, she right had now? Kovalev for a long time. Sergey Kovalev. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, he he's been kind of carrying the promotional company for a long time. Very, very good fighter. Um, they, they're they're really good at, at finding these 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 European Russian guys who are really good and really talented. And you know, back in the days, they had Pernell Whitaker, they had Evander Holyfield, they had you know a lot of great fighters coming up. That when I was there, they had Fernando Vargas, they had Arturo Gatti, um, they had a lot of really you know big name fighters. I got to fight on Fernando Vargas cards, Arturo Gatti undercards. Um, was, was that crazy? Was what happened to Gatti? Yeah, I mean, what's your view on that? I mean, I think he, I think. I think the girl killed him 100%. Like, he just, yeah. I mean, I doubt he went to South America to go commit suicide. And he, cha he changed his will, yeah. like, the week before. I just don't believe it. So, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not a judge or I'm not a, you know, police officer but or an FBI agent, but I just, there's, I just don't see that. Wow. So, um, what, what else? Like, you know, you, you're turning pro. You decide to turn pro. Yeah. Where was your first pro fight? At uh, the Flamingo, May 3rd of 2003. First round knockout. And, Flamingo, uh, that's yep. in Vegas? Yeah, it's in Vegas. On Flamingo in Las Vegas Boulevard yeah. right there. Yep. It was on NBC, so the whole world got to see a uh, you know, first round knockout. And uh, it was great. Oh, oh, good. You got it on TV. That's good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. yeah my, my first fight was on ESPN. Nice. I got, you know, I don't know. I was a swing bout, I, I believe. And yeah, then nice. They, they threw me out there. And that, that was a crazy experience. If I had something funny... And, I mean, you know, I, I really didn't, I wasn't protected the way I should have been, I guess, with yeah. the right people, but I'll never forget this story. As I'm walking out to fight, ESPN cameras, everything, whatever, I think Terrence Ali was the, the main event or Good something. fighter, yeah. And um, I'm looking for my trainer. He's too nervous <laughs> to go in the ring. And, and I end up like uh, some guy, Bob Nelson, I think he was a cut man in Vegas. He ended up you know, uh, and Tim Witherspoon was in the other corner. It was a, a Philly fighter. I won. I won the fight, but it was a uh, tough fight. Know, it, it was. <clears throat> I, I, it wasn't a tough fight. I boxed. You know, I didn't really get hit, but it was just, um, you know, an experience. You realize, like, wow, look at this. What you're going through. You know, next thing you know, you're in the back room. Next thing you know, the lights on TV, cameras, and you know, I didn't have a tremendous amateur career. I had like thirty something fights. And in those days, they were they were smokers. They called yeah. them, like you know, no no sanction. They just right. They put a ring in the bottom of a like the yeah Sons of Italy hall or something. Smoke. Everybody's smoking, and um, you know you just fight. And that's and I learned from that. But I was very fortunate when I the first boxing gym I walked in. I was a light heavyweight, and the first boxing gym I walked in there was three top ten light heavyweights, you know, pros, and that's why I learned. And, and that was great. That, that, was, that was a good experience. I mean, you you know, obviously you're very knowledgeable in boxing, which is great. Wait, what do you think of uh, the fight coming up? Which one? The Tyson-Roy Jones. Oh, I think it's great. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. It's Mike Tyson was one of my favorite fighters growing up. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Roy Jones was my favorite fighter growing up. I got to fight on three different cards with Roy Jones. Yeah. Um, he promoted me for four years. I just think it's a it's a it's a great spectacle. Two of the biggest names in boxing fighting on the card, and it's it's going to be great. Your prediction? If it goes past two rounds, Roy Jones. Two rounds, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. If, if it goes past two rounds, Roy Jones will win, no question. You're also training the co-main event guy, uh, the YouTuber Jake Paul. I've seen Jake um, 
you know, from when he first started, I guess. You know, I was helping him with some sparring. And I seen, like, uh, they, there was somebody else, you know, working with him at that time. And then you took over. And I watched the development that you did teaching him, which you, I, I got to tell you, man, you know, a great job. Great job, man. You Thanks. know, And, you know, I say that because the way I see the way he's thinking in there and uh, his skill level is, is, is really good. If He's developing like a like a prospect. You know, if a guy is, wants to advance in boxing, he's doing everything, and he's doing it at a kind of a fast pace, Yeah, which is great because, you know, well, why, why uh, play around? Right, we're not. Yeah, and, and um, so what's going to happen in that fight? He's fighting Nate Robinson, a basketball player. What do you know of Nate? Nothing. Have you seen any sparring of him? Nope. You've seen a little bit of some videos that are out there. I mean, I really haven't looked too much, honestly. Yeah. No, there's not much of him out there, and you know, so I don't really care what he does, honestly. Like, uh, he can't learn how to fight at 36 years old. He can't. Yeah. So if I would feel really bad if I was in Nate Robinson's position, honestly, because well, they're, they're taking they don't you know if he's got any kind of smarts about him, he knows without a shadow of a doubt that at 36 he cannot learn how to box. I don't care who's training him. I don't care if Muhammad Ali's training him with Angelo Dundee and you know, you know, Georgie well, Benton. I don't care who's training him. It doesn't matter. He's there's nothing he can do on November 28th to be able to be competitive in that fight. I'm telling you. Unless well, he wants to run away the whole fight, but this is the only this long. is the only part where I kind of disagree with you. If you had to train somebody, not 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 Nate Robinson against we'll say Jake, if a 36-year-old guy came to you for a big fight, you don't think you could help him? I could help him, yeah, but it depends where the opponent's at. And Jake's at a different place than where Nate was. Like Nate Jake's been boxing a lot longer than Nate. Yeah. <clears throat> and Jake's really elevated his game a lot in the last year, like you said. But he was boxing for a year and a half, two years before that. Yeah, he, he was he was too protected. Yeah. Oh yeah. When when, yeah. when you weren't with him. He was yeah. uh I used to bring sparring and like yeah. the minute the sparring partner would even get a little aggressive, you know, uh yeah. we had to pretty much make him stop. And Jake I saw right from day one that he had a fight in him. Yeah, but that's that was a long time ago. He's not long like that time. anymore. Oh no, he's much better. Yeah, he's sparring. Oh, oh yeah, now. all kinds of pros now that have good records, undefeated guys. He does it regularly, so those days are long gone. Who do you think is the next superstar in boxing? Uh, that's not there yet, but he's knocking on the door. David Benavides, 168 pound world champion. Yeah, Mexican kid, absolute beast. Grew up in the gym. Older brother uh, Jose was a world champion. Well, what's the fight that's going to define him? Oh, uh, Caleb Plant at 168. Um, uh, you know, Canelo, we could fight Canelo. It's a very competitive fight right now with Canelo. He needs a little 68, more experience. Huh? 68, yeah, he's a great, great, great fighter. He could fight Caleb Plant, um, you know, very, very good middleweight as well. He could fight a Callum Smith. Who's but, the dark horse, you think? I know, I have somebody in my mind. I want to see if you, a dark horse fighter who's beaten all the odds. He's uh, He's got everything it takes to be a superstar. What weight? Just, I, I don't know. I think Light heavyweight. I think there's a lot of them. Oh, uh, Joe Smith. Joe Smith. Yeah, he's a great fighter. Yeah, man, that's very, very, very good. Yeah, one he's of my, one he's, of my favorites. Yeah, Joe. Joe. Joe's a very, very tough. He's like, he's like old school a little bit, you know. Yeah, I love him. Just cause he's like a raging bull. He fought on a network one time um, at NBC and just a uh, good interview. Uh, very tough kid, hard nosed kid. He's gotten a lot better in the last four years. Yeah. I mean, Elder Alvarez. Um, you know, he knocked him out in the last fight. He. Uh, Knocked out, uh, you know, Jesse Hart. Uh, he knocked out. Uh, he's, he's knocked out. He knocked out Bernard Hopkins, um, you know, and uh, he's he's just beaten a lot of really really good fighters. So, uh, great great fighter. Love him. They're talking about him fighting Arthur Better Be of next. Yeah, and, uh, and he doesn't seem to be one bit yeah. like worried about him. Yeah, well, it's a different different animal. Trust yeah, me. yeah. No, I I did. So who, who would you pick in that fight? Better Be of. Yeah. No question about it. I mean, we're talking about the Olympic pedigree. We're talking about a guy who's in the amateur system. Who, world champion is a pro better be of 35 he's not like a young kid yeah. either so he's no, i've seen him fight live we, he's had, very very we, rough very rough he's a lot better than elodie or alvarez or bernard hopkins or you know great fighters that joe smith's mm -hmm. beat but not not the same level as this guy trust me no i, I hear you save your money <laughs> you gotta you gotta admit he's gotta punch his chance he does yeah he does <clears throat> but he's probably stronger than even though arthur mm -hmm. is very strong mm, i don't know about that Better be as 15-0 with 15 knockouts. 
the amateurs, he knocked everybody out too. He's just he's he's a different animal. I wouldn't pick against him. Who do who did he beat for the title? I don't know, but, but he's, didn't he be the Teddy Atlas's fighter? Yeah, but he but that was a good good guy, and he yeah. put that guy in a coma, I believe. Yeah, he really really damaged that guy. So I mean, he's he's a dangerous guy, very dangerous. Yeah. Wait, is he is he from the Ukraine or? Uh, better be as Russian. Yeah. So that's not Ukraine. No. Uh, well, they separated. I know, I know they separated. They separated yeah. about 15 years ago. So actually. he's not from so, Ukraine. He's yeah. from Russia. Yeah. So in 1996, Vladimir Klitschko won the Olympics from Ukraine, but the 92 and the 80, 88 Olympics, Ukraine was connected to Russia. So it was right around the same time. They call you the all-purpose guy. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Man. The all-purpose guy. Jeez. I don't know if I have In boxing, you're the all-purpose guy. I don't know how I feel about that nickname. But it, it almost sounds like a handyman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you clean windows? I don't like it. Do you no, build, I don't. Sure do you don't. build uh, I are you, don't, no. You, are you good with ele- electric no, work? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm pretty good at handy stuff because I, I, I love real estate, and I've, I've owned about 15 houses, so I'm good with real estate, uh, fixing stuff up. But, I mean, I'm definitely not a handyman, no. So, <laughs> no. So this fight with Jake is um, November 28th? Yep. What do you tell Jake in the corner? No, without giving too much away, I'm just saying, like, you know, how do you keep him focused with the the life he has? Because you know, it's it's big, uh, like show business life, whatever that is, the, the the social media life. He's doing so much. Do you find that a challenge when he, uh, you know, when he's getting taped up, ready to do some a workout in the gym? Everyone, everyone's relationship with different people is different, and my relationship with Jake is very different. His social media, he's got assistants, he's got people that help him do stuff and everything, and he's got a million people that work for him. And I'm, I, I do, but I'm not that person. I'm the person that tells Jake, look, you're asleep by this time. You're back by this time. You're not going here because I don't want you to go there. Oh, you're, that's you're not doing this because we're sparring tomorrow. And now it's got- Does he up. listen? Of course, yeah. He oh, can good. listen or he can get somebody else to train him. And what's happened is, is he's involved, he's evolved into that person over the last six months who now I don't have to tell him. I don't have to tell him what he should and shouldn't be doing because he knows because he knows when I'm there that there's there's zero bullshit put up with nothing. So um, I, I have a zero tolerance policy with that stuff. So uh, we all we all got to be on the same page. You know, I'm putting my my name out there. I'm spending a lot of time. And if you're going to waste my time, you could do it somewhere else. But my thing is, this is a dangerous sport, dangerous game. We're all working hard to, for you to be the best. And if we're not all on the same page, let me know so I can put my time somewhere else where that's needed so he's evolved into that person so I don't have to tell him the little things anymore I don't have to tell him to be in bed by no, I've, I've seen it I've seen yeah. his, his whole yeah. mental focus attitude yeah. everything in here and I know you play a, a tremendous part in that yeah which so, is great yeah there's there's no there's no room for laziness there's no room for being unprepared like he's got the whole day to do everything like that's I mean I want everything exactly how it's supposed to be and that's it and there's no exception for it um, he's got it. It's that way, or it's that way. Well, or the he, highway, he sparred it. yesterday. Yeah. What's he do on the day after sparring? What did he do today? We ran last night five miles at the beach. At the beach, five miles. Wow. This wasn't no casual yeah. stroll on the beach. This was a hardcore pressed five run, five mile run. He got up this morning at 9:30 a.m. We trained from 10:30 to 12, and then I got here at 12:30. We're running tonight. We run again tomorrow. We spar. Or we spar again tomorrow. And then we run sprints on Friday. Then we sp- we train again on Saturday. You, and we you run. working with Lewis again tomorrow? No? I don't know. We got a, we got a couple different calls out right now, but not yeah. Lewis. I have a he- light heavy. Okay. For you, if you need one. Okay. We'll talk to you after. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's on a strict schedule right now. That's it. There's no. Oh yeah, no. that's great. Yeah. So, I don't care about his YouTube stuff. I don't care about his music. It's going really good. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the oh, thing God I've been you. saying. Like he's doing this music thing. Yeah, the music's killing it. He's got the yeah. uh, the Fresh Out of London song. It's doing really well. He's got the Twenty Three song. It's got the billboards in, in Town Square right now. Um, you know, it's got a, like almost twenty million views on the Fresh Out of London song. It's doing great. But um, I, I stay in my own lane. I support that kind of stuff. But at the same time, like I just no, you're doing the, the right thing, man. So. But you staying in the lane that keeps yeah. you focused too. Yeah. You know what you got to do. No, man, I'm very proud of you, man. You're doing. I've been around the business forty years, man, and Thanks. like. Um, you know, if someone said to me, Phil, what, what trainer would you recommend? I, I can't even think of somebody, at least the ones that I've met. Yeah, tough. Tough nowadays, right? I became very good friends with Emmanuel Stewart, yeah. who, I, who I respect. Yeah. He, out of his own mouth, he said I was the best trainer he saw out here, which was great. I mean, hearing it from him, being yeah. with him. Um, you know, it's, it's a tough business, man, though. You know, the boxing world. 
there's a lot of jealousy. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of um, you just got you just got to like like I said, you you, you got to do what you're doing, which is perfect. You're, you're in your zone on what you got to do, your responsibility. You know, to make sure Jake's the best he can be, the yeah. best you can be, and that that's all you can really ask for, and that's that's the hardest part too. And you got that down. What do you think of uh, Logan? Nothing. What do you know of Logan? Nothing. Wish him the best, you know. Have you seen him, like train? Has has he trained in the gym with you guys? Nope. Do you see yourself ever maybe training him? Nope. Not even close. But I, I don't even know him. Because you know, I just I read he, he just he just signed a, a contract, mm -hmm. you know, to turn you know to fight pro with yeah. a, some kind of promoter. Yeah, with Ronald Johnson. And they're yeah. talking about him fighting Floyd Mayweather next. They're talking. Uh, yeah, I heard that. No idea what that's about, but. Well, we had Van Lathan on my last uh, podcast episode, and Van put out a challenge to him. So who knows, you know, if he's going to go for that. Well, whatever they do, great. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I've met him a few times. He's a nice guy. He's Jake's brother, so I'm cool with him. But, it, like, I don't. His business, his boxing, like, I don't I have no idea. Well, if that fight ever, if that fight ever comes off, do you see yourself. Um, going against him. What do you What do you mean? Like, if you had the opportunity to work with a fighter that's fighting Logan Paul, would you have an issue with that? That you're training Jake, and you know Jake's going to be like, you know, oh no, I mean, he's going to be wanting his 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 yeah. um, brother I mean, to win. I'd ra I'd rather not train somebody who's fighting Logan. You know, just it's a little too little too close to home. You know. Yeah. You know, morals, ethics. Things like that got to come into play. You know, yeah. You know, well, I'll train whoever I, I, get, I, I'll train I guess. Whoever if, I want. Yeah. If Van like yeah. does get that fight, yeah. I guess I can't come to you for no assistance. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't care. God bless. I hope he wins, yeah. but I don't. I don't need to train him. And I'm fine. My yeah. life's good either way. I don't need to train him. No, so. that's great. Yeah. What would you tell, like a fighter that, you know, since I own a boxing gym, guys come in, they want to fight. Mm -hmm. What are like the your, your top um, like rules for a fighter to be successful. If they don't do these, it ain't gonna work. What do they need? What qualities? I mean, there's so much to it. Like, I mean, obviously, you don't have talent. If you don't have speed, if you don't have power, if you don't have strength, if you don't have stamina, you're not gonna make it. it. Doesn't matter how good, how tough, or how mentally strong you are. If you don't have those things, at least a decent amount, you're just not gonna make it. Now, if you've got a little less of one thing and maybe a little more of another attribute, mm -hmm. then that's where other things like willpower and dedication and training and all those things really, really come in. But, um, you know, you could bring them into me, into the ring, the hardest working guy in the world that works super hard, and I can bring you, bring against him, maybe a fast guy or a powerful guy, and the hardest working guy will never win. doesn't matter. But when those things are close, when those other attributes are kind of close, the guy who works harder, the guy who makes the sacrifices, the guy who's willing to put in the extra effort, those are the guys who are able to pull it out and able to win the tough fights. Yeah, you need that five-mile You need that uh, five mile run. Yeah. On the beach. I mean, when you don't really need that. That's just part of it. I mean, Jake yeah. does sprints twice a week. He does plyometrics. He does all kinds of like high, high hit factory training or like hit hit training systems, and then he does like intense boxing workouts. So it's just I switch it up. What's his ultimate goal? Do you think in boxing? If you had, if you had to think, what you know, knowing him, box. Does he want to win a world title? No, but uh, he, he'd like to, you know, box someone like Conor McGregor. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, call me crazy, but. He's going to beat him. He'll for sure 100% beat him. 100%. Ha have you approached Connie yet? No, I mean, we're not there yet. we got a lot of work to do first. So we got to do our work and keep our mouth closed and just kind of work and put the work what, in. What weight's Connor? Connor is... 175. Is he, oh, know? is he that big? Yeah. Wow. But I don't think he'll have a, a problem fighting a, a YouTube guy. So it doesn't matter what the weight is. So... Uh, would they allow that though? He's a pro now, so I don't think you could have a guy thirty pounds heavy unless he's unless it's a heavyweight fight. I mean, Jake's a pro. Connor's a pro. He's had a pro fight against Floyd Mayweather. They allowed Floyd Mayweather. What was that? Wasn't there like a weight? Like one sixty? Yeah. Yeah. So what's how, what's Jake going to be fighting at? How come five years later Connor couldn't fight at one eighty five? You know, he could. What weight is Jake's uh, fight going to be at? One eighty seven. So it's a cruiserweight fight. Technically, yeah, but I mean, it's, yeah. It's how many rounds? Six. They're going to let Nate go six rounds, huh? I guess, yeah. He ain't going to go six rounds. It's not going to go three rounds. I know. Yeah. Wow. You watch boxing movies? Uh, a little bit, What's yeah. your favorite ones? Man. Top three. My favorite ones. Oh, man. What's it called? 
there was a movie with, uh, what's his name? Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. called Gladiator. One of my favorite, favorite really? boxing movies. Yeah, it's about an underground circuit in boxing where uh, this kid, his dad, owes a lot of money in gambling. He's got to pay this debt off. And he goes and he fights in this underground circuit. And he makes this money and he Gladiator. drops in high school. Yeah, it's called Gladiator. You got to watch it, yeah. Cuba Gooding Jr.'s in it. It's a really good. That and then obviously the, uh, you know, the Will Smith movie, the Ali movie. That Ali, was, yeah. was kind of cool because it was about Ali, but Gladiator I liked better. And then, you know, Rocky uh, Rocky three, Rocky four, the best. Yeah. What you think of the Creed's? Tony Bellew was in those. Yeah. yeah, he fought the first one. Yeah, he fought. Uh, he fought Adonis. Uh, yeah, he Adonis fought, Creed. Yeah, he fought. Uh, yeah, he fought the uh, Michael Jordan Jr. Yeah, he fought. Yeah. Him. I was actually at that that premiere in uh, England, and uh, you know Michael Michael Jordan's a good kid. Small, definitely wasn't yeah. a heavyweight, but I was. They're it doing. Was they're doing another. Uh, how small is he? Five nine. What's his weight? Probably one sixty. That's a fight for Jake. He's not a heavyweight, though. <laughs> That's a fight for Jake, maybe. No, nah, nah, you can, whatever, it's fine. I hear they're doing another Creed. Yeah, I heard, yeah, no idea. But um, I think uh, Mr. T's son now. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's this, what's the saying called? Whenever maybe, you could, uh, maybe you could play Mr. T's son, man. He might have <laughs> had like a, like a child from, with, with a white girl. A different mother from a Hispanic <laughs> mother? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't you think come I'll out here, I'm the, you know... I pity the fool. <laughs> Don't give him no statue. Give him guts. <laughs> wow. That was something, man, what Stallone did. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. That and Rambo. All those <laughs> crazy movies. A lot of good movies. So, best fighter, right? Best fighter ever to you? Uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. Give um, me three. Uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. Uh, Henry Armstrong, Willie Pep, three of the greatest fighters. Sugar yeah. Ray Robinson was undefeated to like almost his, you know, some fight in his 90s, I believe. He was undefeated, knocked everybody out, fought two times a month, three times a month. Mm -hmm. I mean, the no, most I, I'm very aware of all those old ones. Yeah, just uh, Willie you know. Pep was 175 and one. And, and, the, and the one fight he lost, he fought Sammy Ancock, I think, the, the champion above him. And uh, I once interviewed Willie, and Willie goes, Phil, I won that fight. I was robbed. Unbelievable. And Henry Armstrong, I believe, was the only fighter to hold titles at 135, 147, and 160, I think, at the same time. It was insane. Like, yeah, all the, guy the was time, just, when there was only eight titles then. The guy was just an absolute machine. So, I mean, was the competition the same as it is now? Absolutely not. But in his era, he did the best he could, and that's all you can do. Do the best you can in your era. So, um, you know, three of, the, three of the favorites, and you roll back some of the films on those guys and just watch Sugar Ray Robinson, how explosive he was, and how flashy. He was, oh, he was, I watch him every day. He was just a different different style of fighter for back then. Everyone was flat-footed, would just sit there, and he was just, uh, you know, so incredibly athletic and powerful and quick, and just all the great attributes of a fighter, he had them all. I was watching a fight uh, yesterday. It was like the greatest hits of Ray Robinson. Mm -hmm. And there's a saying in boxing, everything comes off the jab, right? The jab, the jab. Always put the jab out. And Ray, when you really watch him, He's always throwing that jab out before he does his combinations and stuff. Right. You know, he's like a perfect example of that. Remember Joe Lewis? Yeah, of course, yeah. Why do these fighters always end up broke? Taxes. Well, they don't pay him? Yeah, of course. So if you grow up having nothing your entire life, and then all of a sudden you're making these millions of dollars, which back then, to, you know, Joe Lewis was equivalent to tens and hundreds of millions now, you're going to live it up a little bit. You're going to spend. You're going to, you know, you you weren't taught when you were a kid, hey, we pay taxes. We don't, like, maybe you don't have the right people around you to advise you and tell you, hey, save some for taxes. So once the IRS comes, all these fighters lose lose their money and go broke. That's well, how it works. I would think Very that, simple, actually. <laughs> I would think that the IRS, whatever, when these guys fight, they take the taxes right out of their purse before they get paid. Yeah, but there's a lot of costs that go into training camps and things like that that the fighters have the right to be able to deduct before deduct they pay. Deduct and all yep. that. Wow. So, yep. Simple. Then lavish lifestyles. Jewelry, cars, women, all those things that take all your money. Nothing that gives money back. Speaking of women. Yeah. How did it affect your career? It didn't really too much. I was married from 24 to 30. And then after that, I had a You had your first fight at 23. 23, yeah. You were married. at How, how long did you know the girl before? A year and a half. So a year and a half. Yeah. So you met, her, you met her just yeah. at 23. When 22, you were, yeah. Where'd you meet her? I met her in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah. 
like at a, at a fight or then what, no, how'd you I meet met her? her like a it was like an event it was like a like like a little party yeah met her a good girl colorado girl super colorado. cool athletic very yeah, my just, first wife was from colorado yeah, very athletic came from a great family just instantly when i saw her i was like whoa what you said head over heels like for a yeah, year and a half year and a half you got married mm-hmm. yeah yep how long how long were you married six for? years six years you still keep in touch at all? I haven't talked to her in a couple of years, but she's she's doing good. She's well. Wow. Yep. But you never, like, had a, like, while you were boxing, moving, you know, a serious career, I guess, you never had, like, a... Groupies? Just, like, a, like a stalker or somebody, uh, of cor- like Of a, course, yeah, of course, but, I mean... But something that was kind of dangerous? I no, mean, no, no, no. I yeah, never got threatened right. with my life, but I mean, there was a couple of groupies that might have slid through the cracks, maybe, yeah. But I mean, never like, you know. Oh, that's good. After I got divorced and after I was like single from 31 to about 36, I had a girlfriend off and on for maybe two or three years. And then when I didn't, you know, I did, I guess, what young single men did. You know, trained hard, lived hard, played hard, partied hard yeah. without partying too much. I never drank alcohol until I was 32, not one time. So I didn't really party that hard. When I say party hard. What's your favorite alcohol? <laughs> Tequila. <laughs> yeah. When was the last time you had one? Last week. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like a drinker, but at the yeah. same time, I'm not like, now I'm at a point in my life where if I want to drink, I'm going to drink. But I don't really ever get crazy, get drunk, so. Have you ever thought about putting the gloves back on? No. No. I get offers all the time, but I just haven't. I don't need to. Oscar De La Hoya is fighting. Yeah. What do you think of that? Cool. 47, right? Whatever he needs in his life to feel like he's yeah. got to, you know, get back to where he can feel good about things and do it, you know, I'm yeah. all for it. You know, that's what he wants. No, I, I pretty much feel yeah. the same way. You know, n- nobody should tell you what to do. Yeah. Mentally, I don't want to do the sacrifices that I used to do all the time to get myself ready for those fights. Why do you think he's doing it? No idea. No clue. I can't say why he's doing something. No idea. You think he'll fight Canelo? No. I'll get murdered. That'd be a big fight. Murdered. Yeah, I think he might fight someone like Sergio Martinez, who's yeah, also they're been retired talking about for three that. years. Yeah, fight someone like that, but I mean, he's not gonna fight Canelo. So he fights Sergio. You think he can beat him? Good fight. Middleweight champion. They both retired retired three or four years. They're both about the same age. It's a good fight. I don't know. Can't say. Who's lived the the rougher life in the last three or four years? Well, De La Hoya had a really rough life. It seemed like, yeah, with the rumors going on, the drinking. Yeah, the drugs. I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I never, I never heard anything with Sergio doing that. He also lives in Argentina, so it'd be a little tougher to hear. <laughs> it's true. Like Oscar, everything he does is in the media. Everything. Yeah. But Sergio down there, it's like you know, he can do some stuff and slide, get slid under the rug. Like third world countries are a little different. <laughs> you don't hear about everything the superstars do. What do you think of um, Tyson Fury? Great fighter, best heavyweight right now. Him and Joshua. What do you think would happen? Fury. Knockout? I don't know, but he'd beat him. Yeah, so I don't see how Joshua beats him. But have you heard anything about Deontay Wilder? Like they're gonna fight in December. Yeah, I'm saying like, have you heard anything about his training? Or no, it's very quiet. They always make a lot of excuses why he lost on his fight, instead of just saying, "Hey, look, it wasn't our night. Tyson's it was Tyson's night. He was the better man that night, and we're gonna do it again." That's what he should say. Have it's, you heard anything about? his training and like different trainers or anything no I don't pay attention to that not at all Mm-mm. I think he got a strength and conditioning coach uh, so the suit you know be a little stronger with that suit on him yeah I don't know maybe I mean, maybe I don't she know. get a different suit <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I don't know he's got, he's got a lot of work to, he's got a tough task in front of him so so um, I think we covered so much man yeah I mean there's so much more, I'm sure, that we could talk about. We'll come maybe, back and do it maybe again. Maybe another time. Yeah. But uh, that November 28th fight with Jake, is that going to be a live audience or no? I'm not sure yet. I don't know. That's in Vegas? It's going to be here. Where? Um, I heard in Carson, California. That's the outside place. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't care if there's fans, no fans. I don't know. Obviously, for the fans, I want them to be able to come. Yeah, but I'm wondering why they, got, they, got, they would have that. Like, if it's at the uh, Stub Hub or whatever... It's That's a lot a, more likely fans will be able to come if it's outside. Yeah, yeah, it's a big yeah, play. So. Maybe they could just put them in sections or something. Yeah, maybe. Wow. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I just want to see Jake, like, shine, man. Yeah. Hope it's not over too quick, but if it is, it is, man. 
I don't care. Whenever it's over, it's over. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a, we'll have a, some tequilas after the fight. Man. Yeah, of course. A little after party. Now, now I know what you like. We'll man. get you the VIP pass. Fill the party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're going to have one, I'm sure, man. Of course, yeah. I'm not a big partier now, but it's like, you know, after his last fight in Miami, you know, we won and we had this big after party and this bus going everywhere. I went back to my hotel and went to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Long well, you, day, fight you, day. You can get in trouble that way. No, I just, I'm just kind of over it, you know. I'm 41, like I'm, you know, I'm not. I well, get it. I've been there, done that, and I, I like it, and I'm happy for them, and I want them to celebrate. But it's just my sleep is more valuable to me sometimes about well, a long day. So you know, talking with you, BJ, man, I think you're a real solid guy. Thanks. Really, um, you got your integrity. Um, you, you do what you feel is right, and you don't try to impress in, by doing something out of your character. No, never. <laughs> and I think you got a lot, a lot ahead of you. You know, you like training, or you like you train any other fighters, or just Jake, I'm, right? I'm still kind of getting used to it, honestly. Like, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I, I still think I'll have dreams that I'm still fighting, and I'll have like you know, just like I still haven't really wrapped. My have head you ever got the in the ring with Jake? Yeah, I sparred with him two times when I first got into camp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could tell a lot. Yeah. That way to see what yeah what he's doing. And I saw stuff. what he did, what I thought he was good at, where, where I thought his strengths were, and where I thought yeah. his weaknesses were, and I started helping him to take away his weaknesses and adding on to his strengths. But I'm just too big to spar with Jake. Jake's, you know, he was 200 pounds. I was, you know, 235. Mm -hmm. Granted, I hadn't trained in a year, but I'm, I'm just too big for him. But I was able to, like, show him the things that, that I know will help him to be a solid pro. Like, he doesn't fight like an amateur. Anymore. He's not, like, looking in there, going in there looking for points. He goes to the body. He sets things up with his ta uh, taunts and his feints. He works his left jab very well. He works combinations oh, yeah, off his yeah. left jab. He sets body shots up very good. He doesn't head hunt. He doesn't do things that amateur fighters do, so he's kind of been able to skip that whole thing and went, go straight to the pros. He punches with his legs. He turns his feet over. He doesn't just, you know, they're not arm punches, so we're on the right track. Have you seen him get hit? Of course, yeah. He got hurt one, in your gym one time. In here once, yeah. Yeah, he did. A kid named Scooby was sparring him, caught him with a good shot, and I stopped the session. But ever since then, he's, you know, and before then, he's been good. Look, when you're sparring 50 people in, in 10 months, I mean, it's going to happen. Yeah, you're gonna. And plus, he's a lot better now than he was then. It's a learning experience. Well, it's better not getting hit. Yeah, if you could, you could if you could fight and not get caught, that means you're doing something right. But it was a good experience for him. It was a little eye eye opener for him. Like he wasn't doing a couple things right. And I'm like, look, man, like I don't I don't know how else to tell you this any more any more openly. Like if you don't do things outside the gym right, this will happen. Mm -hmm. And it could happen either way. But just at least give yourself a hundred percent chance to make sure you go into the ring with with a clear conscience. Yeah, you know and. You know, it wasn't a big deal. Caught him with a good, like knock him out or anything, but he caught him with a good shot, and I didn't like what I saw, and I stopped it. So yeah, it is what it is. That's my my decision. I don't care who likes it or doesn't like it. If my guy gets hurt with a shot or gets buzzed, and I'm not gonna try to put him back in there and see how tough he is. And I know he's tough. I don't need that. So I pulled him out. I didn't spar him for three weeks after that. We worked on some things and went back to the drawing board, and we came back and we got better. Wow. Yep. Well. BJ, man, it was, it was cool. an honor, man. Yep, thanks. You know, having you on the show. I'm looking forward to having you back. We, thanks. You know, we'll get... After the fight, we'll come back. Yeah, for sure. That'd be great. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. <laughs>